could you please describe your characters in the Da Vinci Code of Demon? Could do so. Well, I play a Leonardo Da Vinci. I play um, the man with the demons, uh, and it's a sort of very different version. That should have been the title. The man with the, the demon. It's good, isn't it? Um, it's a ver it's a very different take on Leonardo. It's it's a version that actually doesn't skew too far away from who he was, but it skews quite a long way away from how most people think he was. So it's um he's a troublemaker. He's a, an anarchist. He he doesn't play by the r rules. He's um just talking cliches <laughs> like he's some kind of grizzled old detective. <laughs> he doesn't play by the rules. Uh, um and uh, um and he. He's struggling with uh, with being tormented by um, his lack of uh, legitimacy. He's a bastard. He can't inherit wealth and land, and so he's fighting against that. Um, and it's this is a period, and it's a, and it's about him. <coughs> and, uh, and and I play Zarasta, who is um, his. Don't you dare! <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare do that to me! Uh, Dr. Sexy, I believe. Zarasta Dr. Sexy. I don't know. What is his surname? Still Peritona, wasn't he? Peritona. <laughs> um, I play Zarasta, who is his like uh, closest friend, uh, and Zarasta is based on a guy called Tommaso Messini, who, in the beginning of episode one, you see a character called Nico crash in a glider that Da Vinci had designed, and uh, in actuality, actuality? Mm. In actual reality. In reality... I uh hello I um it was Thomas Messini and he he broke his leg because it crashed and that's a kind of microcosm of their relationship actually I've done that one before trying to make that sound natural um yeah, when you try to make something sound natural it's awful, don't isn't it? afterwards say I've done that before yeah that's a really good point <laughs> what was your nose again um so yeah, and and so he's it's a kind of thankless task of being the best friend of Leonardo da Vinci, um, but he is, and that friendship is explored um, as the seasons go on. Um, well, the, the initially when the script was being talked about and buzzed about, it was uh, it was one of those things that I never thought I'd get seen for because it had such Hollywood pedigree behind it and David S. Goyer who's our showrunner or was a showrunner on one and two as our executive producer creator of the show he um, had r had just come out he just Batman Begins had just come out which is a film we both love yeah. um, and he's working on Man of Steel and this script was actually fantastic and actually what's funny we were saying this yesterday it was a lot of what was in that pilot script isn't really even on the screen in the first episode because it came in quite long and we'd, we'd had to lose quite a lot of it but it was such a fantastic first script. Um, just the chance to be involved in that. It wasn't really a case of, oh, should I do this or shouldn't I do this? It was, I really hope I yeah. get to do this. You know. Most cases with jobs like that, you just kind of <laughs> get, if you get offered it, if you get lucky to get offered it, then you do that yeah. because you kind of just have to make things work. Yeah. People have this image of actors sat at home with a big stack of scripts going like, no, this is, who's this Scorsese who? You know, but it's not. It's not like, especially not at the stage in a certain stage in your career. You don't. You don't get that luxury. But I think with this, even if I had had that luxury, it would have been something I desperately would have wanted to do. You know. So how many scenes did you shoot in total? I did it nil point. You did nothing, did you? Just turned up on the day. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did a little bit. I did loads. I did loads. Uh, but but because I wanted to do justice to who he was, and wh what was interesting, it's it's almost I wonder if I did too much in that I became so... I, I found out so many fascinating things about him that people just simply didn't know or didn't expect that I wanted to really imbue the character with all these kind of contradictions in his personality because that's what everything said he was like. Um, but actually because people have in their minds an old man with a long grey beard it was kind of you you know you the minute you stray away from that that kind of character people start panicking that you're not doing it right and i wonder if if in hindsight i would have you know had had a <laughs> thanks mate but i would have grown a long grey beard and <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think he played santa I am actually. I 
I mean, are you? Am I? Are you satisfied with season eight? <laughs> um, I am satisfied. Season one is uh, you get a kind of hints of Zoraster, who's kind of there but not there, <laughs> um, and we're we are doing we're over halfway of season three, and um, I can tell you the uh, that character is thoroughly um, explored, um, and it's very satisfying, and it's great. Uh, you may have touched upon this doing that kind of slow burn which means that I can be in season one and sort of be a slow simmer and then uh, uh, that character is delved into far deeper. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Rob has asked you when you were in season one of Suits, which part of Laura did you like the most? Laura's got a good answer for this. What's Laura yours? Haddock, who plays Lucretia in the show, and I completely agree with her in that usually when you're doing TV, you want to do theatre. And when you're doing theatre, you think, oh, I'd like to do a film now. And I think it's just, it's about the variety. It's, um, I know it's a very sort of stock phrase for actors to say, oh, theatre's the true art. And, but I'm not, always, I'm, not, I'm not always sure that's something I agree with. I think it is a very specific art, a very different art. And I think you it's get yeah. instant gratification from art. it. Yeah, and, and, and you have complete control the minute on you're, you're on stage. But you... <laughs> on, on uh, have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but on, um, but, but on, um, on a TV show, film, it lives or dies on instinct, and you have to go in there and just make a decision and a commitment, and that's really exciting. It also is it a great excuse when it doesn't work because <laughs> you don't have time. I don't have time, but generally, it, I love that freshness every day of doing something new, of coming in to do something new. I also love rehearsal in theatre. And I love getting to a character. And if you're lucky enough to be in a great play, and I've been one or two of all the plays I've done that, that, that have actually been great, that gets better and better as it goes along. But that's quite rare. You can be six weeks into a play and want to tear your hair out. Mm. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, you have good and bad experiences with everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is this first day. <laughs> and... Uh, oh, and um, because I'm a little bit tender this morning. Um, I actually, you know, I prefer, for me personally, screen acting um, because it's, for me, the best opportunity thus far. I mean, I have done some theatre, but it's, it's, uh, I find it easier, most satisfying being trying to be truthful and, and you know, I don't know, I'm sorry. I just prefer screen acting. That's you, just me. You like, you like, and what you're incredibly good at, just that, is um, subtlety and nuance. And it's very hard to. It takes a great theatre actor to be nuanced um, uh, when you have to do it at a great volume to hit the back of the stalls, and you know you're hitting the guards, and you've got to make sure they can see your facial expressions. Yeah. Greg's very. I mean, if someone comes on, and walks on the stage, just to go, Mama, yeah. the tea's ready, darling. Yeah. Or whatever, I they kind of just lose me just a little bit. Yeah. I can ap absolutely appreciate it, and theatre can be incredible. Mm. Whereas you're a big fan of, and very good at, a tiny shift in the eyes, which is well, for me. Like this. There you go. Which for me is <laughs> like I is for also my favourite type of screen acting to watch. I don't like that's seeing what I people. Like watching. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. I don't, I, like watching. I don't like seeing people do acting, and I'm acting in this scene, and it's written. Of where's the camera? I'm doing this for the. Ca I like to just see people just experience things on a very small level because that's really what we do in real life what's that bit of um, that's a, uh, Paul Giamatti oh, sideways yeah, that's sideways where he sees him yeah. you know. he finds out that he's w his wife is um, is pregnant or the ex-wife's pregnant and just right in the back of his eyes a little bit of him just dies <laughs> and it's wonderful to watch because it's so hard to do it's so much hard and I wonder if that's why I Sorry, this is going. We love thing. this question, yeah. um, yeah. but I wonder if that's what I think it's an actor's thing because we know how hard that is. Yeah. That's actually harder than the doing it, you know, the big acting scene. To actually truly feel it and see it from deep within someone is the God. We've answered this. Like I know. I'm worried now because whenever you see anyone, an actor talking about acting, I generally think, "What an absolute wanker." Yeah. Um, and I, I think was we've listening to you and, and thinking, thinking that. that. 
and then I've elaborated that, and I think we're in trouble here. Yeah. But we're not. We're just love, actually. <laughs> I've taken it back. I'm back to where You're I back. was. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Fantastic. Oh, we don't have a bad privilege. word to say about David. Yeah. As I said, we were both we were both super geeky Batman fans. Mm. And Batman Begins was our one of our favourite films. Yeah. So we're speaking like we're a couple. Yeah. Um, so David's amazing. What are you watching on TV right now? If you could tell you for a couple of months. Um, I'm watching, uh, well, I've just finished Orange is the New Black. Um, and I am about to start House of Cards because uh, Greg goes on about it so much that I feel I have to. And also Ray Donovan, um, which you think is fantastic. So I'm going to give that yeah, a shot. The new one. Uh, and I love True Detective. Well, we both love True Detective. Mm. All right, all right, all right. So if you could choose <laughs> any scene of dinner you can work, which one would you be excited to be in? Well, Breaking Bad. Breaking because it, it, it yeah. never dropped the ball. As far as shows that, are, that have been, it's been and gone, you've seen the entire thing, and in five seasons it didn't do anything wrong. And that is hard, you know. It, having worked in TV, to actually see the amount of hurdles that have to get jumped in order to get from the conception of the idea to TV. The idea that they never fell over any of them along the way in five years is almost a miracle. Mm. So to be part of that... Particularly when you gauge a first episode, it's very difficult. Mm. It, it, um, even if you, particularly if you haven't done a pilot, <laughs> I'm all out of sync. Um, <laughs> particularly, if you, particularly if you do a pilot... Um, it's very difficult to get everyone firing on all cylinders from every department, yeah. acting, tone molder. All up. knowing what the show is. All same. knowing, yeah. So when that happens, and it happened with House of Cards, and, um, Sopranos, The Wire, things like that, it's like Mad Men, it's like, wow. That's a, a huge accomplishment, isn't mm. it? Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think my time is done right now. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure.